Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. We have traveled all over East Africa to find hard working farmers. We want to celebrate them while giving them the knowledge they need so they can adapt and make their farms more productive even while the climate changes. We want to support them to get better yields and increase their income. We will see how farmers can benefit from our experts' advice while learning from each other in so many ways. Join us on this journey and share in the farmers' experiences on the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Hello and welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are visiting a young farming family. And we want to find out why they chose to work as farmers. Because farming can be hard work. But not as hard as bringing up a family, Tony. We want to see how they balance farming and family. Let's find out how they do it. And if they need any help. Let's go. Today we are in Embu. And we are visiting Rosemary and Evans. They have two children. Nine-year-old Anne Esther. And two-year-old Stephanie. It didn't seem that I was doing enough for Shamba Shepherd to be here. I thought they wanted a big farmer, a farm with a lot of things. So I didn't think they could come to my farm. We are not looking for big farms, are we, Tony? Only big farmers, Carol. On just two acres, they have popo, mangoes, bananas, capsicum, and so many other crops. Three cows and two cows as well. Great work. I watch Samba Sepa because I like farming and I run a lot through Samba Sepa. So let's go meet them. Ah, Tony, but where are they? What, 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 what? They say they'll be here. Yes, building their new house. Maybe the next room? Ah, there you are. <laughs> Hello, Ivan, even now you're working. Rosemary, I'm how fine. are you? I'm fine. And who is the lovely girl? Uh, what's your name? Uh, she's Stephanie Waidera. <laughs> Stephanie Waidera. Yeah. How old is Stephanie? She's two years old. Two years old. Mm. Evans. Yes. Lots of good work going on here. Thanks a lot. And this is through farming? Yeah, through farming. <laughs> well done, well done. Thanks a lot. So, Rosemary, yes? what challenges are you facing? I wish uh, Shampa Sherpa to enlighten me on how to to do my nutrition so that my family can be healthy. Wow. And wow. moving my two year old baby here. Stephanie. So All right. Yeah. I get you. I get Stephanie, you. Stephanie, do you agree with that? Yes. yes. yes she does. She does. <laughs> Evan. Yes. yes. What challenge? We are have you a lot of challenges here. Mm -hmm. One for the marketing of the, our product. Don't worry because Shamba Shape Up is here and we come with experts. Thanks We're a lot. We're going to make sure that you're fully shaped up. But yeah. just before we begin work, we always pitch our tent. So you'll give us some time okay. and then we'll join you later. Is Thanks. that okay? Okay. So later. Right. I have we'll see you in a bit. Later. Bye, Bye, Stephanie. Bye. Bye. Well, Caro, let's pitch the tent and get ready for work. Let's do this, Tony. Whether you have a farm or even just a small kitchen garden, growing healthy foods is one of the best ways to ensure a healthy diet. So, we've invited Snem Wakere from Nutrition International to give us some advice. So, Rosemary, okay. as you said earlier, you needed some information and advice on how you can feed your family better. Yeah. Yes. So, normally, what do you feed them? I cook ugali, mm. kideri, mm. and sometimes we exchange with rice. With rice. Yeah. So, Snem, yeah. why is it important to have a balanced diet? Actually, we call it healthy diet, not mm. balanced uh -huh. diet. We call it healthy because mm. we are looking at it mm. with the consideration to an individual need. Mm -hmm. What? Rosemary needs is not what a baby may need. Like uh, food specifically for maybe babies, for, for, for adults, adults yeah, for, for teenagers, a yeah. for a sick person. Yeah. Wow, so let's go see what we have there. Rosemary and Evans grow a wide variety of food on their farm, including sweet potatoes, cabbage, bananas and capsicum. The capsicum looks ready. Yeah, yeah uh. it's ready for harvest. This is all great food. But growing infants under two years of age, like Rosemary's daughter Stephanie, are at risk from childhood diseases. So, are these foods enough? So Stephanie is in a, a thousand days of her life. And there are things that if we don't correct before then, they can never be corrected. Mm -hmm. There's something like stunting. 
stunting is the shortness of a person or a child compared to a inch. This one can only be corrected before two years of age. If it is not corrected, it can never be corrected. That's why you see some people are shorter compared to others of the same age or of the same locality. Mm -hmm. We have other diseases like cricket. If a child doesn't get food that is rich in calcium and there's no vitamin D for absorption, that child can get ricket. You found about kwashiako. Mm -hmm. Kwashiako can even kill and it does kill. Mm -hmm. Another problem that can be caused by malnutrition is a disease called marasmus. Marasmus is when we see that the child looks very old. When you look at the face, the wrinkles, and the, the skin has a lot of shagging. Yes. That's a problem of inadequate food intake. So, by feeding Stephanie healthy, we are taking care of all those problems. Mm -hmm. The time from pregnancy to when a baby turns two years is called the 1,000 days period. These 1,000 days are the most important in a child's life for growth and brain development. For your child to grow healthy and strong and learn well in school, the most important thing is good nutrition. So what foods should um, Rosemary be feeding Stephanie? What Stephanie requires at her hand, she should feed five servings in a day. Mm -hmm. This feeding is three main meals and two snacks. And a snack can be porridge, it can be a fruit. When she feeds five times in a day, that will help us achieve that good growth curve. A typical meal plan for the day would be for breakfast, a boiled egg, porridge, and a ripe banana. For the morning snack, popo. For lunch, rice with beans and steamed spinach. For the afternoon snack, milk. And for dinner, beef stew with some mashed food like potatoes, green bananas, ndengu or pumpkin leaves. When we look at vegetables, vegetables are rich in vitamins and vitamins are important to your child. Vitamin A, which is present in dark green vegetables, will help the child's immunity and also the high sight. Giving your child a variety of foods is very important. The main types include fish, meat, eggs, green leafy vegetables like kales, starchy vegetables like potatoes, whole grains, nuts and seeds. But remember, don't overcook food, especially vegetables. Vitamins are destroyed by heat. So if you want to give her vegetables and rice, you need to separate them. And that is not enough for Stephanie. She needs a lot of protein. Mm -hmm. So for her to get this protein, you can put some bees in that rice. That now become a complete meal for that child. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it is still the rice that you have been cooking, but we have only enriched it to provide with our dairy requirements. Mm -hmm. The advice I give to farmers is to consume what is readily available. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are encouraging kitchen garden. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to have a very big chamber for you to have a kitchen garden. You can improvise. I'm pleased because I'm not so shocked what I've been feeding on my kid. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think you now I have to change. And uh, I'm being shaped up yes. as we go on. Yes. Yeah. And now, let's catch up with the latest weather forecast. Welcome to the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. The rains have already started in the past few weeks. However, this coming week we expect very little rain across Kenya. Northeastern, Upper Eastern, Lower Eastern and the coastal region will receive no rain or little rain of less than 25 millimeters. This includes Trukana to Mandera, through Tana River to Mombasa and Kwale. Some parts of Garissa, Isiolo, Meru, Taraka, Kajiado and Kwale will see moderate amount of rain of up to 50 mm. Central Kenya counties such as Nyeri, Moranga and Kirenyaga expect no rain or little rain of less than 25 mm. Nairobi and Kiambu will get no rain or little rain of less than 5 mm. The Rift Valley will have little to moderate amount of rain, ranging from 5 to 50 millimeters. Counties included are Transoya, Baringo, Nandi and Nakuru. Some parts of Narok, Bomet and Kericho will get moderate amount of rainfall of up to 50 millimeters. Western region counties in Nyanza, such as Bungoma, Kakamega, Homabe and Kisi will see little to moderate amount of rainfall, ranging from 15 to 50 millimeters. 
The rains this season are less than in the past years. That is why it is important to keep harvesting rainwater and irrigation if you can. Plant drought tolerant crops like cassava and millet. Farmers, your crops will be germinating. This is the time they are easily attacked by pests and diseases. Check your crops to identify and control them early. Fruit trees also need manure and the right fertilizers for good growth and increased production. A debe of manure is enough per tree with 250 grams of CAN and 120 grams of TSP. This will increase with age. For more tips and weather forecast, call I Shamba on 0711-082-606. I am Brenda, see you next week on the Shamba Shape Up Farming News for Kenya. <laughs> I have come to realize on Shamba Shape Up that farmers never just have one problem. Often, there are many because problems are linked. I have asked James Mathenge from Sigenta to come and tell us about Mavuno Zaidi. It's a program that supports farmers across the whole production cycle, from getting microfinance for seeds and inputs, through to farming advice and training, right up to finding markets. Now, Mr. Mathenge, mm. If our farmer here wants to plant, uh, would you like to plant tomatoes? Yes. Let's, let's say he wants to plant tomatoes. Okay. And he comes to you okay. and wants to use Mavuno Zaidi okay. package. Okay. How do you start him off? So we first of all introduce you to a financial partner we are working with. Okay. Yeah. Because for a farmer to be successful, okay. uh, he or she has to acquire quality inputs. Yes. Yes. And quality inputs are expensive. Okay. That financial partner has got a tailored package, which enables this farmer, first of all, to grow that crop okay. and then start repaying that loan from what you're selling from your, your yeah. crop. And this is essentially what we refer to as crop-based uh, financing. Take, for instance, how long does it take for a crop of tomato to, to mature? Three months. Three months. Yeah. You'll be required to start servicing that package, that loan, from the fourth month, and it can be spread out. Uh, for a period of up to a period of 12 months, depending on the terms of that financial partner. Okay. So once that has been established, mm. how do you work hand in hand with the farmer? That's when we start now with this farmer, like from nursery management, general crop husbandry, that is identification and management of disease and pests. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do advise farmers on which products to use and how to alternate so that to avoid a scenario whereby we have diseases uh, in his crop. And then linkages to end market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's awesome. Mabunu Zaid is awesome. Yeah. So we start with our farm right from the nursery up to, to the market. Uh -huh. Yeah. Let's go to the markets. How do you link him with the market? Um, in Mabuno Saindi, we have uh, established a database of buyers who uptake various uh, products from farmers, depending on the volumes uh, that farmer is producing. Uh -huh. yeah. So, Evans, yes. do you want to grow tomatoes using Mavuno Zaidi? Yes, of course. All right. Right now, James is taking us through one of the key parts of Mavuno Zaidi, training. We're going to learn how to make a tomato nursery. And the first thing we need is a rack. This is the lac which this farmer can use uh, to press his seed trays on. And this lac has to be like one meter from the ground to avoid splashes from the ground because soil has got a lot of fungal or even viral diseases. The next step now is to press the media into the germinating tray. Okay. So this is what we use to germinate our seeds. It has got all the nutrients and it has also been screened against all diseases. You just press it gently. You don't press to avoid candling, which will reduce air spaces, which can affect germination uh, of our seeds. After that has been done, our next step is to press now seeds, one seed per hole. Which variety are we planting today? Uh, this is uh, Kilele F1 from okay. Sigenta. Remember farmers, always use gloves when handling seeds to stop contamination. You just press one seed per hole. So what's the next step now that our seeds are on the tray? Now the next step is for us to cover these seeds. Cover lightly with the planting media, then water from a clean knapsack. If you're not spraying, yes. do not use high pressure because high pressure will also aid in uncovering of those things. Okay. Next, cover with a bag to keep off insects. How 
can I know they have germinated? Most of the time they will take like five to seven days to germinate. Okay. So once they have germinated, that's when you come and remove the mulch and you leave that seed tray open. The most important thing for you to note is keep on checking on water levels. Because if that medium dries up, that seed will perish. Tomatoes has a lot of money. I have also decided I will venture in that farming business. Carol! Yes, Tony? What's new on nutrition? Hmm, well, did you know that you can actually have five meals in a day? Am I supposed to have five meals a day? Not you. Our kids. Oh, I see. And to have five meals a day, you need expert advice to get good crops. That's not all, because coming up after the break... How to get a pedigree cow. And how to look after it once it's arrived. Welcome back to Shamba Shape Up. We are in Embu and you are visiting Rosemary and Evans. We've seen how a good diet leads to strong and healthy children. And how treating tomato seeds can get you a healthy crop. But we also want to find out about dairy financing and getting good milk production. No time to waste. Let's go back to work. Let's go. Rosemary and Evans want to increase their milk production by getting a new cow. So, we've asked Albert Bundy, our finance expert, to explain how this can be done by managing your money well. So, I've seen what is Rose has done in the farm. At least she has done a good foundation. Mm. She has the store for feed. She has the machine for cutting the fodder. But now maybe what she needs to do, she needs to improve the cows. If you can be able to have a bad degree cows, the production can be very high. Breeding can take a minimum of 12 years, successive generation to get a bad degree cow, which mm -hmm. takes a long time. True. The shortcut is to get a financing. Now for financing, we give finance for farmers who want to buy uh, quality cows, those farmers who want to construct a nice zero grazing unit, and then we also finance customers who want to buy machines like chaff cutter, we talk of a milking machine, so that now the cow can be able to produce enough at the farm. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Albert, yes. a farmer like me, can I get such a finance mm -hmm. so that I can boost my, uh, my, my, my cows? Mm. You can get a cow in two ways. One, you can do saving. Then two, you can get a loan. When we talk of saving, we can open an account for you. We only need your ID, you open an account with us, and then we can give you a saving plan. If you want to buy a cow, in 12 months, you take 100,000 divided by 12 months. So every month is around 80,000. Every day is around 208 shillings. You send it to the bank through the mobile. So you don't need to come to the branch and then deposit the money. So through mobile banking, it becomes very easy. Mm -hmm. And then once you save that money, after 12 months, you come, you do the money and you want to buy your 100,000 cow. Mm -hmm. That's one way. If you cannot be able to wait for 12 months to get a cow, we can also give you a loan. The loan will enable you to get a cow of 100,000, and every month you will be paying a monthly installment. So if you have taken a cow of 100,000, every month that is 10,000. So 10,000 every month, every day, because this cow, when you are going to buy, we expect the cow to produce milk. So 10,000 divided by 30 days, Every day, you will be around 300 shillings. Mm -hmm. How much do you sell a liter of milk? Um, at now, it's going for 50 shillings. 50 shillings. It's 50 shillings. Albert went on to explain that if you need to pay back 300 shillings a day and you're selling one liter of milk at 50 shillings, you will need to get six liters per day that goes to paying back the loan. Put that money in the bank. By the end of the month, we deduct the monthly installment and we'll also be able to uh, continue feeding the cow and then also getting some income for the family. Albert, what will happen if I default this payment? What we normally do is to sit down with the customer. What is the challenge? We need to understand. Is it that the milk production has gone down? If the cow has also dried and there is no money to pay that period, mm -hmm. we can give you a grace period or we can restructure that loan. 
until now you start getting milk again. So now if, if, if our farmer Rosemary decides to now go for this loan, yes. what benefit is it going to bring her in the long end? A farmer can be able to increase her asset base. Because now for now, when she add another cow at the farm, that a cow is an asset. Mm -hmm. It will produce more milk. So at the end of the day, she will be able to get more income at the farm, and then she can be able to reinvest at the farm. Mm -hmm. So which means now, two to three years down the line, she can be able to have a good quality cows, she can be able to get more milk, and then she can be able to get more income. And then she can also now venture to value addition, mm -hmm. because right now I've also seen she's only selling raw milk, that she can maybe make curdled milk, or she can also make yogurt. Through value addition, she can also increase the value mm -hmm. of the milk from that farm. The conversation was very open and also enlightened, enlightened me to know how to manage my small finances that I get from my savings or from the chamas that we have with the others women. With Albert's advice, our farmers will be getting a new cow. I have asked Stephen Kanye from CKL Africa to come and guide us with his top tips to prepare for the new cow's arrival. So now, Kanye, uh, from your observation, what can a farmer do in preparation of adding in a new cow to the existing stock? We say that for you to get a very good uh, herd, you have to check on the breed, that you get a very good breed for your cow, mm -hmm. so that you can ma maximize on production. Number two, you have to consider the housing. You get a very good house yes. uh, for the cows. And when you look at this house, you can see that the roof it doesn't have iron sheets. So th uh, that means that the cows are getting rained on. When you look at the cow shed, uh, the hygiene is not good. And where they are sleeping on, it is muddy. Okay. So the comfort, the cows don't have any comfort. Yes. And you need to get the cows having very good comfort so that they can sleep around seven to 10 hours. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good housing is a key first step. So our Shamba Shape Up team wasted no time in getting to work preparing the cow shed. Now, once the cow arrives, what is Kanye's top tip for good cow management? For the management, we would like to narrow down to deworming. So deworming, how often do you deworm your cows? After the demand. Actually, that is the best regime. For the calf, we are supposed to deworm a calf every month from birth. You deworm every month up to six months. Then mm -hmm. from there, you are going to deworm after every three months, three months. That is the routine deworming. And uh, when you are deworming, yeah. you have to consider the weight of the cow. That is very important. Uh, okay. and uh, how do you know the weight of a cow, Evans? That one I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> the most accurate way of uh, getting to know the weight of the cows is using a weighing bird. Uh -huh. A weighing bird is a tape that is calibrated in cages. Okay. So you, you get to an animal, you get it around the gut, yes. then you get the right weight. Then the, the kilos that you are going to get, that is the, the, the weight of the animal. Ah. After getting the measurement, then you get to the product. Ah. Yes, the product that we have, Nielsen, you indicated the dosage rate, which goes together with the weights. Getting the right dosage is critical for full deworming of your cow. Shake the bottle well and give 10 milliliters for every 20 kilograms of body weight. So, for a cow weighing 200 kilos, give 100 milliliters of Nilsan. Okay, now into feeding. Why do cows need supplements? So that the metabolic processes of the cow, they are going to be perfect. The cow is going to add weight. The cow is going to come back uh, on heat and is going to give you enough milk. So that is the reason why we do the supplementation. Mm -hmm. And for a big cow, you have to supplement with Macric Super, which is uh, for a titting cow. And you have to ensure that you give the right amounts of minerals. For Maclic, feed each cow at least 200 grams per day. It's best to let them feed at libitum or freely. This way, the cow eats as much as it needs. The market will also help the, this cow to boost immunity. You're going to cut down the cost of uh, veterinary. Yes. yes. Okay. And now, the milking stage and the final top tip. What you are supposed to do now is using very uh, good uh, milking salve 
medicated milking serve okay. so that we can keep off the bacteria that uh, brings mastitis. The, when you are milking, you apply it on the teats. The teats are going to be soft. They are going to avoid any cracks and we are going also to avoid any wounds. So okay. any wood that is on the teeth is going to heal because of the medicated milking salve. Use CKL milking salve every time you milk. Spread it over the teeth before and after milking. When you do that, yeah. you are going to get maximum production. Okay. Because yes. when the cow is producing the milk from the four waters, yeah. then you are going to get uh, better milk, you are going yeah. to get good quality milk, and the inc it is going to increase in, uh, in production. Okay. And the new yeah. cow will join in and the milk production will go higher. Yeah, he's going to get milk at uh, 50. He's going yes. to milk 50 liters from yes. the three cows. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. 50 liters from three cows. Six of those liters will go to paying back your loan. That leaves 44 liters for your family and for selling to the market. And now the Shamba Shepherd team can finish off the cow shed. The floor is flattened out, so there are no holes. Clean, dry sawdust is spread over. Sleeping mats lay down. And with a new roof to keep off the rain, the new cow will be fully shaped up too. Advice to young women like me is to tell them not to rely more on towns. Let them come to the farm. Soil is beautiful, soil is sweet, and the yields, they can make us smarter than we are. After you come back, we'll find a lot of changes in daily farming and also in your culture farming. I wish Shamba Shepherd to have a space in my farm so that they can be guiding me, they can be seeing my challenges and addressing to them immediately. <laughs>